Okay, so this is my tour of the Steam interface. Um, don't mind the jittering. It doesn't normally happen like that. That's actually happening because of the Fraps recording. Um, so here we go. As you can see, I've got this grid system in front of my face. That is the chaperone system that lets you know where your borders of your room are. Uh, I can't show how to set that up, but uh, basically you set that up as you start your... Uh, configuration when you first get the whole setup uh, system going um, this setup process has you map this out uh, we'll go over that at a later date um, so <clears throat> first I want to show you guys here uh, you got well actually I've got my controllers in the wrong hands as you can see there you go uh, oh this one is not tracking correctly yeah not at all okay just a second Turn that off. There we go. Uh, I think it's this one now that's not tracking correctly. No, it's not perfect. This should be calibrated correctly. But anyway, you get the picture. So, okay. So basically you have this... 3D model of your controller in the main in uh, main load menu. This is basically what Steam VR looks like when you first fire up the headset. Uh, you basically start Steam VR. Boom! This is it. Um, to get the Steam interface, or actually before you show that, uh, you see you've got your uh, the whole thing is tracked. You can see your thumb on the trackpad, and if you look below here, uh, there's actually it shows which hand is which, right? So obviously you want your thumbs inwards. So this is the right, this is the left. As you can see here, it's got the LED lights to indicate the battery power. Um, and it tracks all your button movement, which is really cool. Uh, interesting thing about the lights that I just mentioned, uh, they're not actually on the front of the, the controllers themselves. You do need the headset on in order to see the battery power of the controllers. Um, so that's one thing to note. <clears throat> so the button right below the trackpad, this little one here, looks like two squares on top of each other. Press that. That brings open the Steam Overlay menu. All right. So I'll just get kind of to the start. Here's the library. This is like the main menu when you first fire up. And as you can see, like here's the, con the, the lighthouse box. It kind of gives you an idea of the scale, right? I'm going to walk right up to it. <clears throat> I can't walk all the way because I've got objects in my face, but... See, the controller, that's the scale of the controllers. And oh yeah, you can see, well, this is what's in my face, so I can't walk any further. Um, so anyway, yeah, so you got your, this is basically like the, the Steam big picture. Uh, same thing you'd have in your living room. Um, so it, it just navigates with this controller. Super, super cool. Uh, you get this laser pointer, whichever button or whichever controller you fire it up. You get the laser, so your left or your right. And the camera system is always on the left, and it's not always enabled. You have to actually enable that. Uh, that may or may not change. I don't know if some things are going to be different because this is a developer kit. Uh, the retail one will be different, and we'll go over that when we get the final version. Um, so, okay, so basically you got this guy here, and I'm we're going to quickly go over, like, navigation. So basically you get your... Uh, most recently played and then it gives you a few things that are updated from um, uh, like your non VR games right uh, and if you touch the trigger or the trackpad while you're pointing at the arrow uh, it actually goes upwards or downwards depending on the arrow right uh, then you get your you got your recent this is the recently played titles uh, I don't think that that's going to be limited to VR uh, that's all I see here because that's all I've played recently, but I think the recent titles will be recent everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Installed is going to be limited to your VR stuff. So you're limited to um, any kind of, of VR uh, game that's that's going to be in Steam VR. I don't know about uh, what's going to work with um, uh, Oculus, but this is for the Vive anyway. So... 
Um, basically, you got Tilt Brush, you got, I got Space Pirate Trader. Basically, if I want to launch something up, like I'll just show you here, you fire up the uh, app by clicking on the app. You just point at it, click on your trigger, it fires the app up. Uh, and it takes a second or two. And uh, there we go. It fades into the world, or it fades into view. Right, now I've got my trigger. I can woo, I can doodle and draw and do whatever. And then swipe and wait. Yeah. So anyway, trash. Ooh, trash that guy. And there's just settings and whatnot. I'm not sure what I loaded up. This must be the credits. All right. So, anyway, so you can get out of that. Um, it tilt brush doesn't seem to have an in-game close menu, but yeah, you can just come kind of come out at any time. Uh, there's a couple of settings that you've got um, that you can pull up, and as you can see, like I'm still kind of in the world, um, but. Yeah, so you can do general VR settings, so I can do do not disturb. Uh, by checking that, that's going to have, there's no Steam overlay updates. Uh, so basically what I mean by that is when you get a notification from somebody, like uh, let's say a friend logged into Steam or started a game up, uh, it'll pop up a 3D object right here in front of you, right below your screen, uh, that'll indicate who it was, it's a little message or whatever. It also does that for messages. Uh, the chaperone settings allow you to uh, change the color of the overlay and sort of stuff. Um, as you can see right now, I've got these little grids, the square grids. That's the beginner menu. That's how you start. That's the default. Uh, intermediate is a, a little bit bigger of a grid. Uh, squares is just kind of like 3D square or like, I don't know, kind of two, 2D squares in a 3D object. I don't know. It's... Uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference in my opinion. Uh, advanced is starting to get a little different because you've got just these big openings and it's not as uh, not as visible. And then developer, you just all you see is the floor. Um, basically, if you don't have a big open area, you probably don't want that. I like intermediate and squares. Um, beginners okay too. I guess it makes really doesn't make much of a difference. Um, and you can change your color. So the grid color, like, let's see, here's the, I can see the grid there. I'm just going to move over a little bit uh, so you can see it a little better. So grid there, um, and you can change the opacity of the grid outline, right? So you can, it can be super thick or super bright or whatever, uh, dark, and you can change it to any sort of color in the rainbow. Um, I personally have actually kind of grown fond of this, like, bluish purple. Um, and like fairly bright um, and there we go and then you got in headset <clears throat> now this uh, I can't really see right now um, let me see reset the default no it's not gonna let me go out of there let's see I'm going to fire up space pirate trainer and then I'll close space pirate trainer because this one actually lets me close right so close that there okay I'm back at the grid uh, go back into my settings, right, and then you can change your color. So you see how this is kind of like a whitish gray? Um, I got this slider bar, and I can go to like a bright color, or I can go, I can get darker and darker and darker still to like a pitch black. Um, I personally find that like kind of like a, a middle to dark gray uh, is is personally the best. Um, and you can also choose to do uh, images. So there's 360 degree world images. Um, I don't know. It's it works. It's okay, but like I'm super high in the air. It's really strange. Um, and then yeah, I mean, where's the floor, right? Like it's it's not the floor is not indicated correctly when you're when you're looking at it like this. I don't. I personally don't like it this way. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter matter what images. 
um, you're just always like kind of floating in the air. Like there's there's the treetops, right? It's it's kind of weird. Uh, so personally, not my thing. Um, it does say the open image folder here. Uh, I'm looking around. I do not see an image folder. It doesn't seem to operate at the moment. Um, again, this is a developer kit. Things are subject to change. So who knows? We, we might just be, it might just be one of those things that's not enabled yet. Um, so you just go back to Steam and then, yeah. So basically that's, that's the options within Steam. And you can obviously, like I was showing you, you got, you got like web. So I can do like Reddit and bring me to reddit.com and you can whoops uh how do i scroll yeah see navigation is a little weird i have not figured that out yet because you'd think it'd be the trackpad but scrolling doesn't work clicking brings that up um so no that's not it uh oh i should switch back uh, it's a image color yeah something like that yeah this seems to render a little quicker too it's a little lighter uh, i don't know if you noticed it was a bit jittery so basically i prefer just the basic image um and then yeah that's pretty much navigation in a nutshell it works really quick it works really easy uh i'll show you like just jumping in again so i got Space Fire Trainer, boom, I'm up, I'm playing, I'm in, there's my grid, I'm in the world, I'll start to my game, walk a little too close. And... So that's, that's basically it, in a nutshell, essentially.